Welcome to the Young and the Restless. Um, as you may know, if you've been listening, our dear sweet Olivia is currently full to bursting um, with child. Uh, she she may actually be giving birth right now as I speak. Um, it's December 29th, 2023 at 1.30 p.m. Mountain Time. I'm just I'm I'm clocking that in case in case I turn out to be right. I want so there's recorded evidence of my clairvoyance. Anyway, while she was busy, you know, barely being able to move, uh, Victor and I got together with Steve Ernenwine of the Dreams That Shape Us podcast. Um, his second appearance on the show, and we just had a uh, you know a boys' night of shorts. And uh, I've edited that into a four-part series that we will be airing over the next few weeks in lieu of our regular programming um, while Victor and Olivia adjust to being new parents. And uh, we'll keep you in the loop as things develop with the, uh, the, the regular show. And um, in the meantime, enjoy part one of our conversation with Steve. No, I was dreaming down to sleep. I dreamt I had a soul to keep in the fire. I feel Yeah, so Olivia is taking a breather for a little while. Uh, yeah, she's extremely, extremely pregnant right now. She's about as pregnant as you can be. Currently experiencing a uh, alt country band <laughs> called Brax Braxton Hicks. Is that right? That's right. That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah. Braxton and Hicks Partying. and Co. Uh, I never heard of that, but it's when your body pretends to I be know. in labor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just as like a, like a, it's not a contraction, but it's kind of, similar i don't know or like for she experiences like this tensing up and intense feeling and yeah it's not super comfortable yeah yeah the way i understand it is that it's like the body's way of like kind of not really doing a test run but just like preparing <laughs> yeah yeah stuff's stuff's getting into position you know yeah, yeah. So nature's a little fake out she's in there <laughs> Probably sitting in our, our, uh, we've got a kiddie pool sitting in our living room that has no water in it, just ready to go for for when the time, when it comes. Got a hose and a tarp, (laughs) ready to go. (laughs) Wait, is (laughs) this serious? Yeah, because we're doing it at home. Yeah. Really? Yeah, so she goes goes into labor and I lay down a tarp and get the hose connected to our sink and start filling up a big kiddie pool sitting there. It's not a kiddie pool. It's a pool specifically for... (laughs) Um, okay. you know, that's yeah, it's it's, wow. it's a Ninja Turtles themed yeah. <laughs> Walmart Walmart. Is that yeah, we got the ball or pits. Is that ice cold? Uh, uh, tap water? Yeah, that's the thing. The best system is to just boil water on the stove and like dump it in there to try and keep it warm as you as you go. It's like you try and pump in as much from the hot water heater as possible, but that's not going to do uh-huh. the job. Yeah, and it's going to cool off real fast. Wow. And then I was for a while. I was like, "There's got to be a better way." So I was trying to research. Like, there's got to be a way to like heat a pool, and there are, but they're all like super dangerous and deadly. So you don't want to like <laughs> stick like an electric heater thing into a pool and then have have someone try and give birth in there. That's not. That's an extremely dangerous situation. Surround it with so. candles <laughs> and fans pointing. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. So. In the on on third mic, that is the voice of Steve from the dreams that shape us back on the show. Yes, third third mic. Yeah, I was going to introduce myself as Steven Tyler lives dead. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> lives dead. That's his biggest credit. Let's live Tyler's father. <laughs> so what oh, he's known fuck. for. Uh, yeah. Yeah, super, super grateful to be back here with you guys. I was, uh, my butt was puckering thinking I was going to get put in the hot seat tonight, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a, this, little did you know, this is a surprise dream interpretation. Yeah. We told you, don't even worry about bringing a dream. This is super casual. Yeah. <laughs> it was all an ambush. 
No, the, the yeah. it's our trap. No, the the seat is as cold as Olivia's kitty pool. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're we're breaking format a little bit. Uh, our plan is to just kind of talk about dreams instead of to trying to interpret a dream. You know, so we just kind of wanted to get into. I thought it would be cool to kind of get into, um, like. I, I would love to talk about like the spiritual side of dreams. I'm still in a place where I'm like, I'm open to, I've heard some crazy stories about stuff and some unexplainable things that have happened, but I'm still I, I like, I'm going to operate in a grounded put from a grounded place. Most of the time be like, you know, I don't know that there's anything that we're able to connect with in our dreams, but I'm open to it, you know, but, um, I don't know. It's I I love talking about it and um I I I think it's interesting like you know there are people that think it, dreams are completely meaningless and there are people that think dreams are like a secret portal into like the truth of the universe and the truth's probably somewhere in between, <laughs> yeah, right? I think I'm somewhere where it lands. I'm somewhere in between for sure. <laughs> I like it. Well, let me ask you uh Victor how do you feel about life in general? Like, what is your spiritual persuasion? Yeah, you know, I, oh man, I mean, okay, so I definitely went through my, like, my, like, Mr. Logical Reddit atheist <laughs> phase yeah. when I was younger. I feel like I've come to a place, though, where I am, like, pretty open to stuff, you know? I, I feel like, uh, my philosophy i'm kind of agnostic and my philosophy is generally like the vaguer you are the more open i am to it and the more specific you get the more skeptical i get um that's kind of where i land right um and then i've had some weird experiences like olivia and i like met over sharing like ghost stories that we'd experienced and like may i'm open to the possibility that like you know, weird experiences I've had and that other people have had have just been, or just like, you know, your brain tricking you or whatever, but I've, I've seen some shit, you know? And so mm -hmm. I am also open to the possibility that there's more out there, you know? So yeah, I'm, I'm open to everything, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where do you land, Steve? Yeah, I guess, uh, I'm probably more, <laughs> you said you're, you're on this poll, kind of Zach's kind of in the middle and I'm probably more on the spiritual side probably I'm not like way off the deep end I like to think that I'm pretty grounded which is probably what you're looking for um I just actually <laughs> on the men's call I was just on uh I got done talking about dreams and because I'm going to be the captain of our team and I really want the guys to like get into dreams this next season and uh one of the guys was like hey so how edgy was that for you to talk about that with us and i was like you know i can talk about this stuff all day with the right people but like in a group of people that i don't know quite where you sit with how much you give a shit about dreams like i get kind of sheepish and i'm like i was like that felt really edgy because i know you guys like appreciate dreams but i know you're not like into them uh so I, i'm forgetting what i'm talking about here what what did you ask me <laughs> <laughs> same question um, like spiritual persuasion yeah are Spirit, you or, okay. like do philosophy you, on life yeah or, oh so okay <laughs> the whole point of what i just said all right um was uh i told him yeah it felt super edgy it i always like sit there and think to myself when i'm talking to people who, who aren't necessarily into dreams like you know the meme comes up where it's like how I think I sound talking about my spiritual views and it shows like this person meditating beautifully. And then like, it's like, but what people actually hear. And then it shows Charlie day all like fucking right. crazy with like, um, <laughs> all the pictures and the red thread. Um, and I'm like, that's always my fear that like people are just like, what are you talking about? Um, but no, I like <clears throat> for me, I would say I really, really love what Carl Jung said about dreams, that dreams are the mind of nature itself, um, that it's just a spontaneous, beautiful 
very natural, very human thing that happens that is so like the spontaneity of it to me is like pure creative energy that happens. I don't know. And to me that, that feels spiritual. It feels like if that is like the mind of nature itself, like we're dipping our spoon into that or like we're somehow that energy is, is in us and it's creating these experiences or these like symbolic representations of where we're at um, internally and both in our waking lives that there's something deeply spiritual to me about that. Just the fact that it is so natural. We don't think of, we don't have to think about it. We don't have to make it happen. It just happens. It's there for us. It supports us deeply. If we like actually lean into what they're trying to tell us. And I think it's just a really gorgeous kind of magical thing that happens <laughs> that is at once biological and at and in, in another way it's it's so metaphysical that yeah it seems like it's a bridge of some sort to me and so yeah i i think it's it's beautifully psychological and i think there is like a really beautifully spiritual element to it that if you do fully open yourself to it 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 tends to it tends to blossom for you in a really beautiful way so I don't know. Maybe uh, you should just go full tilt, like fucking show me. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hit me with it, baby. Yes. Funny. I also went through my my own like snide atheist phase, um, particularly in high school. I think is when I was like the most materialist and and me logical. Um, I think especially if you grow up in like a conservative or Christian. Uh, area and tend towards like rebellion it's uh, there there's something edgelordy about being like there's no god sorry um it's exactly what it was for me <laughs> or, yeah it was definitely like a take that mom yeah kind of thing that i was doing yeah this is it and then you die hate to tell you but i'm 15 <laughs> and i know everything i get it man <laughs> it's just but but interestingly enough like at that same time, that was when I was most um, active in like trying to lucid dream. Like, because mm -hmm. I had really vivid dreams and I started like reading about lucid dreaming in high school. And that's, I feel like when I, when I was the best at it, at keeping a dream journal and, you know, recognizing uh, moments of lucidity and like actually capitalizing on them. Uh, so there's something uh, about it that like drew me to it that wasn't purely like materialist or logical there's something like magnetic about it um mm -hmm. and in recent years I've, I've had more of a spiritual renaissance that for me i feel like it had more to do with just real like feeling like being that that totally logical atheist kind of guy was just like not fun <laughs> you know because i've always been in, interested in dreams and aliens and uh and, and bigfoot i, I was kind of like cherry picking my mysteries <laughs> uh just taking the ones that i thought were cool and being like no but these are real yeah <laughs> um and well taking the logical approach can kind of be a defense mechanism can it it's like yeah i don't even want to go there i don't even want to consider it it's it's bullshit yeah I, like, that's i think i have noticed that that kind of rubs me the wrong way is like people will sometimes think that they are are being like the the fair-minded science-minded by people like having the smart guy attitude about something by not hearing it out not listening to something working backwards towards conclusions saying that must be bullshit therefore let me tell you why you're wrong you know and i just i don't know i find that to be kind of like a lazy way to approach like new information yeah yeah and it's and it's more fun to like to see if when somebody's, I don't know, is into like horoscopes or something or astrology, you know, I've never known. I'm, I'm learning a lot more about that now because Shelby's into it and I'm finally at a place where I, I don't just shit on it. I'm like, well, t tell me about that. I've been sitting, totally. sitting here all day talking about aliens. I, I have no, uh, <laughs> yeah, I have no ground to stand on to, to say that that's, that's, it's mm -hmm. at the very least, if at the end of hearing about it, I don't, I'm not like, sold on it it was still interesting and is aesthetically like cool symbology and i found it to be even like utilitarian like at least in conversation you know 
to like describe to yeah. describe a whole like now I'll say stuff something will happen some situation or or whatever and I'll be like oh that was so scorpionic <laughs> cuz like even if the stars didn't actually determine that and I don't know if they did or not it still was like scorpionic you know like and and that's like a shorthand for explaining this whole set of emotions and 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 uh aesthetics and 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 kind of something that would take you like an essay to describe is captured in one word there if you understand the the lingo mm -hmm. yeah i really respect that way of approaching like different people's beliefs and and like different ways of looking at stuff i feel like i i've come to a place where i i operate that way too where like if i meet somebody that has a totally different worldview than me I try to be the person who is interested and asks asks questions and wants to know more about, you know, where that person's coming from. I I don't want to be the guy that just like is shutting people down. Yeah, you got to approach you got to approach everyone and everything with a healthy bit of curiosity. Especially dreams. I think I think something that some so many people get hung up on around dreams is like coming thinking they came to the conclusion of what it means and then being like, "Okay, that's it." And like, I don't know, for me, I don't know, I was like, kind of, at least lately, probably the last year or two, I've like really fallen in love with like, just like being with the questions that the dreams bring up. Um, and not so much like needing a firm, like, this is what it means. Yeah. Um, it used to bother the hell out of me. I'd be like, oh God, I this imagery is so intense and like what it's bringing up in me is like so intense. I need to just slap a meaning on it real quick so I can like say, okay, that's what it is. And I can just like act like it's done. But I think dreams, if you allow them, they can continue to live in you in this really beautiful way that continues the dialogue or like continues its influence on you. Like the image can like kind of live with you in a way that I think is really beautiful. and. Yeah, to me, just like holding closer to the questions that the dream brings up uh, feels like a really powerful and beautiful way that I've been able to like really make that actually stick. And yeah, don't don't get don't be satisfied too quickly with your conclusion, I guess, is what I'm ultimately trying to say, because yeah. they're kind of onions. And you look at the same dream like six years later and you're like, damn, that like. I have so much more context for like what that was trying to say now that I'm like this much farther down the road or, or like dreams can also like mean different things for you at different points in your life. Like you look at the same dream years later and you're like, well shit, like where I'm at right now, like that dream is still speaking to me, but now it's speaking to me in the context of where I'm at right now. And it, it's giving me a whole different like look at what the dream was. And it means something different to me now that it's still just as nourishing as it was back then. And yeah. It's really kind of neat the way that, I mean, the longevity that they have sometimes, like a really solid dream can can really mean a lot to you at different points in your life, depending on where you're at. Yeah, I think that's... I still... Go ahead, Victor. Oh, I, I was just going to... I think it's really cool that you're able to have your dreams documented in a way where you're able to go back and reflect on stuff years later like that. Maybe if we start listen to, listening to our like archive uh recording zach <laughs> will be able to be like oh five years later like i get that with like that comes deeper for me now but um so something i've noticed um as we've done our thing over the last year plus that we've been doing this is um there is a lot of the time with dreams like like when they're when you're getting into the meaning of it there is like kind of a surface level interpretation that's like kind of a comfortable interpretation. It's like kind of well-tread ground. And then if you, you dig a little deeper, there is usually something like kind of uncomfortable there. And it's like, mm -hmm. I think I, I've seen in all of us, it's like a willingness to take kind of the more surface level interpretation and then like resistance to get into the, like the deeper stuff <laughs> or the more uncomfortable stuff. And um, like, like kind of clinging to the surface interpretation for safety. You know, I, th I sure. think I've seen us all do that at various times. And um, yeah, I don't know. Like you said, layers upon layers. Yeah. I think I also, str yeah, I think man. I also struggle with what to do with even that surface level interpretation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, 
because it'll be this this isn't a dream that I've had, but I, I just I'm just making one up for the sake of the example. Like if I were to see like a broken clock in a dream or something, and then the next day I'm like, I feel like that means that I feel like subconsciously I'm out of time or whatever. <laughs> like that's pretty surface level. It, it might even be like true and somewhat insightful, but then what like after that, like what do I do with that? Is I think something that I don't know a lot of the time. Like I, I, I would, like I could talk to my. <laughs> I don't have a therapist. I could get a therapist and talk to them about that. Uh, I could reflect on that. But I almost wish I could go back into the dream and ask it. Like, what, okay, so you told me that I feel like I'm out of time. What do you mean, out of time to elaborate? Out of time to do <laughs> what? How do I fix that? Like, how do I? You got to climb into the clock, and within the clock, the answers await you. Yeah. Yeah, but I feel like that's something that you've brought up before, Steve. Like, um, did that the idea of dream incubation, like, like furthering mm-hmm. your uh, a dream's narrative? Yeah. Did you develop it on your own, or did you kind of learn it from another source, or how did you come across dream dream incubation? Yeah, there's quite a bit of information out there if you Google dream incubation. Okay, uh, I, I know that's that's definitely I, I picked it up online somewhere. I can't remember exactly, but and then over the years, seeing what worked, seeing what didn't, I've kind of, kind of developed my own ideas about it. That's right. It's like a lucid so, dreaming technique, right? Uh, not technically, no. <laughs> it's just for, it's just, it's just a way to engage the, your dreaming function in an intentional way. Where, yeah, you basically, before you go to bed, you can you can think about, or you can write down, or you can. In whatever kind of ritualistic way you want to do it, um, set an intention for what you will dream about. Um, and so it, it's tricky. It can be tricky because uh, depending on what you're asking, your psyche might be like, wow, um, I don't think I need to humor that. Uh, <laughs> just like, I don't know. I don't know what like an, an example of that would be off the top of my head, but just like if if what you're asking for is in a, in alignment with kind of like where you're at or like what you actually need from your dreams then they don't tend to honor your requests as readily as least as far as I've I've discovered so much of like the dream incubation rhetoric out there is like yeah you just I don't know you just write down on a piece of paper what you want your dreams to be about you hold it really firm in your mind as you're falling asleep and uh if you have really good dream call, you'll recall a few dreams when you wake up in the morning and hopefully one of those dreams feels connected to what you asked for. Um, it's very light and fluffy like that. And I'm like, yeah, okay, but you're not like helping people with any of the pitfalls. Like, is what you're asking for really in alignment with what you actually need right now? Because if it's not, your dreams are not going to put priority on what you're asking for. Um, is what you're asking for just completely ridiculous to the unconscious that it won't humor it ever. Um, so for me, the way that I've chiseled it down is like, okay, if there's something that's really weighing on me, if, if I'm struggling with something emotionally or like something in my life is just, I can't seem to get myself around it. Uh, usually these are instances when this works really well because there's a need for it. Um, you're identifying that you're struggling with an emotion. You identify that you're struggling with a relationship. You identify that maybe you're not, maybe you got a blind spot around something and you just have no idea how to like, you know, look beyond it. Uh, these are like great ways to approach dream incubation. Uh, so like, <clears throat> say you're struggling emotionally with a situation and you just can't seem to figure out how to get yourself out of it. You can, at night, right before you go to bed, you can sometimes writing it on a piece of paper makes it real for you. Um, sometimes just like really holding that feeling in your body and like moving into it and being like, I don't know how you would address this personally, but for me, it's kind of like me dialoguing with my soul, whatever, the, whoever the dream maker is, uh, just kind of being like, Look, can you give me an image? Can you give me 
an idea of like how to work through this like can you even like give me an idea of like what this even is like maybe maybe you're stumped maybe you're like you're in a funk that day and you're like i have no idea like what this is um you can ask that you can be like how can you help me work through this how can you give me an image to help work through this like that's that's oftentimes how i how i approach it like can you give me an image or a relational dynamic in a dream that helps me work through this I, that's like a really great question to me um because your dreams will readily give you that especially if it's something pressing uh because you're like what can i do you're not like give me the answer you're like can you give me an image or or dynamic relationally that i can see and i can work with like if you give me that then i can have an idea like an access point on how to move into that a little deeper and a little bit more with a little bit more awareness than where I stand right now. Um, those kind of dream incubation questions, I feel the dream responds to very readily because you're not asking it to make the decisions for you or, or asking you or asking the dream to give you the answers per se. Um, you're willing to be in the conversation with it. You're willing to do work. Uh, and I feel like the unconscious loves that. Like, um, and you're not asking from a place within the original problem. Like in my broken clock example, if I go to bed, do a little ritual, like ask ten times, out of time for what? Uh, and I'm just like obsessing over what am I out of time for? But the, the 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 root of the problem is that I feel like I'm out of time when I'm not. Like I'm the the problem is that I'm obsessed with running out of time. So it's like missing the point of what the the dream is trying to tell me. Yeah, it could be. Um, yeah, and I, I love I loved your example because you you started throwing all these questions out. And I was like, yes, those are the questions. Like those are that's what I'm talking about. Like if you have questions like that that you're stumped on, like the questions help you kind of move deeper. Like they give you something to be introspective about. Like instead of being like, oh, it's a broken clock, I'm out of time. Like close book, mm -hmm. that's it. Um, the questions like help you continue thinking about it and and continue the conversation forward. The clock is is now still living in you, um, and so you're you're there's like a I'm doing like a, a wave like motion. Uh, there's a rhythm that it creates. I don't know that that carries forward with you into your life in a way that has you still thinking about it. Um, and and that kind of inquiry. I feel like is where you actually really do start to go deeper with these symbols. And if you do, if you do get to a point where you're like, Oh my God, I just had this huge epiphany about like what the broken clock means, then whatever that epiphany is, now you can carry that image with you. And so now the broken clock holds this space within you where like, you're like, now I figured out how to work with the broken clock. Like now I know relationally <clears throat> why i always feel like maybe maybe you realize like how to overcome that feeling of like feeling like you're always out of time like maybe that's where it took you and now anytime you start to feel like that you can be like oh fuck the, i'm i'm back at the broken clock again and then like you can stop yourself and be like okay we're not doing the broken clock thing again um this is how like images and symbols can like really continue to live in you where you like have this beautiful image to hold on to that has immense meaning for you that carries way farther than that particular dream and in that particular situation that you're in it can it can have it can have longevity in a way that you can continually circle back <coughs> and be like oh my god okay <laughs> we're here at the broken clock again why are we at the broken clock again um and the fact that I have the awareness of the broken clock, I can do something different here. Um, I don't know. Take now we're getting away from the in incubation stuff again, but. <laughs> what you were just talking uh, about there kind of reminded me of, um, uh, I've heard of like a dream or, or uh, uh, like mind palaces. And it's like people construct like an, a, a, a place in their mind and they fill it with objects or whatever that, that are connected to their shorthand symbols for like complex memorization problems, right? And it's like 
that structure in your brain allows you to like access this information or like this complex um uh like memory problem uh in a way that you couldn't if you were just trying to do it you know with with like your natural memory or whatever it's like a it's like mind technology you know it's like you you're developing mm-hmm. like a tool system within your own brain that you can work with and interact with and like so what you're talking about kind of sounds like like that but instead of working on like memorizing the periodic table or whatever you're like memorizing your own like internal growth milestones and like bits of wisdom that you've extracted out of <laughs> like interacting with like inter- introspection and like self reflection right and it's like you cre- you create this structure within yourself that is the broken clock which is a little bit of self awareness that you had of like I need to let go of this time obsession that I have. And instead of having to constantly retread that ground where you have to walk yourself back to the place of that awareness, you, you like intentionally like commit that to memory, like, like emotional memory or, or spiritual memory of like, that's a problem that I have. And I know about that. And if I see that clock Mm -hmm. or if I think about that clock, I know that that's the problem. I don't know. That's interesting. It's like, uh, it's like, I don't know. It's like uh, it's mind technology. You're doing like uh, like high tech stuff in your brain. There, <laughs> I have an example of one of these kind of dreams for me. If you want me to share it real quick, yeah, please. Um, in <clears throat> February of 2011, I had this dream. It it was such. I remember that specifically just because it it carries that much weight for me. Uh, where I was running on a beach and i'm like pretty close to the water's edge just kind of like running straight down this beach but i'm running backwards i'm running straight but i'm running backwards if that makes sense i'm running towards my goal which there's this big blazing it's either sunset or sunrise feels kind of sunset like but uh it's never really that well defined so to me this dream always felt like it gave me this beautiful image of like how I've always felt, but didn't have like the, it didn't have the language for it. Um, where I feel like I've, I've made progress towards my goal, but I've always been running at it backwards. And so at the very end of the dream, I realized how futile what I'm doing is like, it's so much more work to run backwards <laughs> where I want to go that all of a sudden I'm like, what am I doing? And I'm like, why don't you just turn around? And I turned around and I just ran, full on ran straight where I was trying to go. And there was such an elation that was attached to that. It just felt like so liberating and freeing. And so for me, that's been the story of my life trying to, you know, fulfill this purpose that I feel like I have or like this calling that I have and just constantly feeling like I'm going towards it, but I'm running at it backwards i'm i'm not i'm not committed in the way that i'm full-on turned into it and i'm like running straight at it i'm like doing this weird dance so every time that i i feel a lot of resistance towards going towards what i feel like i'm being called towards uh that's a moment where i'm like god damn it we're fucking running at it backwards again Mm -hmm. like how can we how can we turn around right now and like actually embrace like what we're trying to go for instead of this kind of defensive, I'm going to go towards it, but I'm like, kind of like uh, go backwards towards and it. Do you remember yeah. if that <laughs> dream, if you tied that to something specific in your life at the time, or is that like a, dis- a discovery about Steve himself that he runs backwards sometimes? Yeah, I don't, I think that was like a couple of years later that I really understood that dream. I think in the moment I was just, it, the ending was so elated. There was so much elation that I was like, Man, that was a really beautiful dream. Like how how encouraging. <laughs> but I don't think I like fully understood like I think that was like an image that like that had to live in me a little bit longer and get down the road a little bit further. That actually was two months into me moving out to Minneapolis to be with Erica. And I was struggling to find a job and I yeah, there was a couple things around that time where I was like that was a necessary dream for me to have where it was kind of like encouraging me to like go all in. But I don't think I, 
I don't think I had recognized at that time that it's it's a legit pattern that I have. <laughs> Um, and so that, that dream has had a lot of longevity. That's, that's a dream I, I'll probably my whole life, I can continue to keep coming back to that anytime I feel like I'm dragging my feet or I'm, I'm not full on committed to where I'm trying to go, I can lean back on that image and be like, just remember how good it felt to like throw yourself completely at it. And can't say that holding that image makes it any easier, mm. but it at least like, it at least is is was such a a felt experience that it's very encouraging to me to have it and to hold it and to be like, okay, we need to pause here for a second. We need to we need to recognize what we're doing and so we can potentially give ourselves more fully to what we're trying to do. All right, sweet dreamer, thank you for listening to part one of. The young and the uh, youngian shadow boxing club series event of the year. Um, I will catch you for part two in a couple of weeks. And as we always say, Happy New Year, loser. It is a good viewpoint to see the world as a dream. <laughs> And unconscious human personality. Something like a nightmare. Like a nightmare. Not all the things we dream. I've never had a dream. Social world is real. It's just a grief. Science is dead and magic is real. Drop by the dream. You do this. Oh. Where do do your dreams come from? What? 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 What?